I hope everyone is doing well. Um, let me just say a quick prayer. Father God, I pray that you will bless this word in the name of Jesus. I pray that this word will bring wisdom, it will bring knowledge, it will bring understanding. Father God, I pray even now that you're opening the ears of their heart and the eyes of their heart. The understanding of their heart is open, Father God. I pray that you're opening their natural ears and you're opening their natural eyes. We pray that you're removing every spiritual cataract that will try to blind your children. Father God, I pray that this word will bring conviction, yes. It will bring impartation, yes. And it will bring revelation in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I, so the God, the Lord said to me, we're in deep waters. He said this to me the other day. He said, we're in deep waters. I'm calling my people and my children into deep waters. And it brought me back to a word that I got last year, September 27, 2021. I'm just going uh, right there. So it's September 27, 2021. And it was a word about deep waters. And you know, in this, in this vision, the Lord woke me up at 1 a.m. And he you know he began to speak to me about deep waters and 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 the Lord began to say to me I'm calling my children into deep waters and at the time I didn't really understand you know I've heard scriptures talking about deep waters before but I, I, I didn't really know what he meant practically so I begin to like ask him I begin to have a conversation with him I begin to start to go back and forth be like what do you mean by deep waters and the Lord said to me um, and this is what he's asking of us now. So though he gave me this word in September 2021, he didn't give me the, the unction or the authority to release it until today. So the Lord said, I'm calling my people into deeper communication with me. I'm calling my people into deeper relationship with me. I'm calling my people into deeper vision. I'm calling my people into deeper intimacy with me. I'm calling my children into deeper prayer life. I'm calling my children into deeper seeking posture, that they will seek me deeper, that they will go deeper in seeking me. The Lord said, I'm calling my people, I'm calling my children into deeper revelation. The Lord said, no more shallowness, no more shallowness. I'm calling them into deeper gifts of the Spirit. I'm calling them into deeper fruits of the Spirit. The Lord said, I'm calling my children into deeper obedience. No more partial obedience. No more more lukewarm obedience I'm calling them into deeper obedience the Lord said I'm calling my children into deeper lamentation into deeper cry into deeper cry into deeper cry the Lord said I am even calling my children into deeper missions deeper missions let's go into the trenches ah I am calling my people into deeper mantles Last year, the Lord showed me that there were mantles that were falling, but no one were picking up these mantles. No one were picking up these mantles. No one were picking up these mantles. Mantles were falling, but no one were picking up these mantles. I, I wrote that word down somewhere. And he just gave me the release to, to release that word. So I'll make a separate video about mantles, but he's calling us into deeper mantles, deeper assignment, deeper trust. We trust God with certain things and then we don't trust him with some things. We open up to him about certain things and then we don't open up to him about the other things. The Lord said, I'm calling my children into deeper trust. I'm calling my children into deeper realms. I want to reveal things to them. I want them to have divine angelic interaction. I want them to get out of just the earthly realm. There's different realms in the spirit. There's a, the first heaven, the second heaven, the third heaven. And there's also different layers in earth as well. But we're stuck on just the cross of the earth and the Lord said I'm calling my children into deeper realms deeper supernatural deeper understanding deeper love with me and with self and with others I'm calling my children into deeper knowings the Lord said you know one of the things that he, he said I'm sick of hearing them saying oh the God of Abraham the God of Moses, the, the, the God of Aisha, Meshach, and Abednego. And he said, yes, I am the God of those. But when are you going to be able to say, am I not your God also? 
He said, why do we have to always go so far back when I am still the God today? I am the God of your grandmother. <laughs> I'm the God of your grandmother. For those of us who have a praying grandmother, I'm the God of your pastors. I'm the God of your apostles. But we, we tend to go back and say the God of Moses. And yes, that's honorable. And yes, that's respectful. But when will we begin to understand that he is the God of now? He's not just the God of back then, but he's the God of now. I'm the God of Catherine Coleman. Some of y'all don't even know who that is. There's real men and women of God who are in who 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 are recent. We don't have to go all the way back then. But when you have a deeper relationship with him, you don't even need to call anybody else. He, I'm the God. Of, he's the God of Orain. He's the God of you. Put your name. Fill in the blank. Put your name there. That's relationship. The reason why we're able to say the God of Moses and the God of Abraham is because of the deepness of their relationship and the deepness of their communication. But we can, when is it going to be said? When we're gone from this earth, somebody should be, be able to say, oh, the God of Orain, oh, the mantle of Orain, the mantle of you, the God of you. But we can't get that reputation until we go deeper into deeper waters. <clears throat> Then the Lord took me to Ezekiel 47, verse 1 to 5, and I'm going to read it and I'm going to bring the revelation. Ezekiel 47, verse 1 to 5, read. In my, and this is Ezekiel talking, in my vision, the man, and the man is an angel, in my vision, the man brought me back to the entrance of the temple. There I saw a stream flowing east from beneath the door of the temple and passing to the right of the altar on its south side. The man brought me out the wall through the north gateway and lead me around the east entrance. There I could see water flowing out from the south side and of the east gate. The south side of the east gate. Measuring as he went, he took me along the stream for 1,750 feet and then he led me across. The water was up to my ankle. So at this point, Ezekiel was in ankle deep water. Then he measured off another 1,750 feet and led me across again. This time, the water was up to my knee. Ezekiel was now in knee deep water. Then he measured another one. So the angel kept measuring. The angel kept bringing Ezekiel deeper and deeper into the water. Then he measured another 1,750 feet, and the river was, the ri and this time the river was up to my waist. So now Ezekiel was waist deep. Then the angel again measured another 150 feet, and the river was too deep to walk across. It was, it was deep enough to swim in, but too deep to walk through. That's what Ezekiel said. And I was like, God, why did you bring me to the scripture? And then God said to me, you notice that Ezekiel did not say that the water was impossible to cross or he, he did not say he could not cross it. However, Ezekiel said it was too deep to walk across. Then, it then Ezekiel went on to say, but it was deep enough to swim through, but not to walk through. The law says sometimes we are faced with deep waters and when we encounter deep waters, because we're not able to do our usual activity, which is walking. Walk. So walking in this, in this thing, is in this vision and in this word is a symbolism for our usual activity. So sometimes the Lord will bring us to a deeper water, a deeper place in him. And because we have to get rid of certain things, because we can't bring our usual thing with us, we can't bring certain weight, we can't bring certain behavior, we can't bring certain complaint, we can't be certain perspective. We turn around and we do not go deep because we can't walk in it. We can't be our normal self in it. We never stop to think, okay, maybe I can't walk in this. So he's calling me to do something different. He's calling me to dive. He's calling me to, to immerse. The Lord said, why do, the Lord said, um, then the Lord asked me, why have my children stop at waist deep water? Half Holy Spirit and half flesh, half wet and half dry. 
why do my children view it as challenging to come into the deep because they are not able to walk through it the Lord said my children they view it challenging to come into the deep waters because they can't walk through it as if they can't swim as if they can't dive they back away from the deep that God is calling them in because they can't use they do their usual function walking like I said walking in this is a representation of just being doing your common function your normal way of approaching things and because you can't do your normal way of approaching things you you you, you tend to turn away from the deep that you're being called into but the Lord said will they not immerse themselves and swim in that which they can no longer walk in the Lord said when I bring you to deep waters and you could no longer walk in it I'm calling you to dive in I'm calling you to swim in it I'm calling you to immerse in it but many of us back away from swimming and diving in it because if we go into the water then half the weight and half the weight and half the things and the baggages that we're trying to um, bring with us the moment we dive the moment we immerse the moment we go deeper the current of this water is going to take away those excess ba excess baggages and take away those excess weight and take away those things that do not need to come to us to the to the other side we are afraid to dive in we're afraid to swim we're afraid to immerse because we know the moment we go deep certain things are going to die the flesh is going to die the flesh is going to drown come deep the Lord explained that people limit themselves to what keeps them in control because being in control feels safe so most of the times when we're walking we're we're like 98% in control unless there's a strong wind that's I'm, I'm little I'm like five 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 six <laughs> right so like you know there are times when the way the wind is strong and it's moving but it's very rare that we see that but so when we're walking 98 percent of the time 99 percent of the time we are the one that's controlling our movement when we're walking but should we go into a water should we dive into a water the current of the water does move us does sway us we have to swim against the current sometimes and the current does move us along as we're swimming as we're immersed so when we're diving in, we're no longer in full control. The Holy Spirit is now in control. But I hear the Lord said, let my people know that when they can no longer walk, that is when I will take over. Because they will have to swim. They will have to immerse. You will no longer be half flesh and half Holy Spirit. You will be full Holy Spirit. So that's what he means when he said he will take over. He said, tell my children to go into the deep where I am in full control and my current can carry them. Then the Lord brought me to this other scripture, John 7 verse 38. The one believing in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. And then the Lord asked me, Arain, can water flow from one's belly if he or she does not drink it? if he or she has not drank it how can one drink and how can one drink water if he or she has not bring the water to their mouth how can one how can the water come to their mouth if they're keeping the water at waist level so what god was saying to moses that the scripture said you know out of the belly out of the you know out of the the belly will flow rivers of living water but rivers of living water just does not flow out of everybody belly if it said the one believing in me the one believing in me when we believe in him, we will, we, we will immerse in him. And what God is saying, God is saying that, you know, you can't, for, in order for water to come out of you, you have to digest water. You have to drink water. But we can't drink water until the water is brought up to our mouth. Whether it's water in a pool, water in the ocean, or water from the fridge, you take that bottle of water out of your fridge and you put it by your waist, that the water ain't in you, unless you have a long straw, <laughs> But eventually that water have to come to your mouth for you to digest the water, to drink water, for water to be in you, for water to then flow out of you. Rivers of living water is not flowing out of some of us because we have not immersed in the water. We have not, we have kept the water at our waist. In order for us to drink the water, it has to come up to here, at least up to here. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Then the Lord brought me to another scripture, Jeremiah 29 and 13. And, he, and it said, and ye, and ye shall seek me and find me. And when ye shall search, and when ye shall search for me, wait, let me read it again. And ye, uh, all these ye and ye. <laughs> and ye shall seek me and find me when ye search for me with all your heart. So God is saying to me, the only time you can find me when you seek me is if you seek me with your whole heart. We can't be half Holy Spirit and half water and half and half flesh. We can't be half wet and half dry and think that we're going to see God. We have to fully, we have to do it with, with our entire heart. So if we are leaving the water at waist level, our lower body is covered in the, in the water is wet, but our upper body where the heart is at and where the mind is at is not even wet yet. It's still dry because the water is waist deep. A lot of us are waist deep and thinking that that's good enough. Oh, I'm waist deep. You know, waist deep. The lower body. Say in this, in the revelation that God gave me was the lower body. The lower part of your body represent your sexual life. So some people maybe be like, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm holy. I'm the water. I'm waist deep. You know, I'm not having sex. I'm not fornicating. I'm not committing adultery. I'm not doing porn. I'm not doing pornography. So you know, my, I'm down there is wet. I'm covered down, but up here is dry. The enemy is after your heart and your mind. So even though you're waist deep and the lower part of your body is wet, up here being dry, we need to be fully wet. We need to immerse. That's why baptism is your whole body going to the water and come back up. I hear God say, come into the deep. I hear God say, come into the deep. What's going on in, the, in this season, in this time, it requires us to be deep. And if you can't go in the deep by yourself, you you can you you could get a prayer group, but there are gonna still be some time when you need to navigate the deep by yourself, and the Lord will send help. But you have to submit yourself. The Lord said, come deep, no more lukewarm, no more shallow water, no more kicking your feet at the shallow part of the the, 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 the water waiting for the wave to wash up and wet your toe and wet your ankle the lord said come deep this is a season and a time that requires us to be in deep waters church come deep prophet come deep intercessors come deep pastors come deep apostles come deep deep water this is a deep water season you're not hearing from god like you used to you're not dreaming like you used to you're not prophesying like you used to because you are not deep psalms 42 verse 7 says the deep call unto the deep the time that we're in is deep time so the deep is calling unto the deep when you go into it, when you're in deep waters, you get deep revelation. When you're in deep waters, you get deep communication. When you're in deep water, you get deep understanding because deep call unto deep. What that means is where, wherever your level is at in the spiritual realm and where your le wherever your, the level of your submission is, that's, that's what God will meet. That's where he will meet you at. And sometimes he won't even meet you there. The king should not have to descend to meet you you have to come up when moses wanted to talk to to to, G, to god he went up to the mountain the, he did god didn't have to come down to the foot of the mountain moses was the one that went up from the foot of the mountain to the top to get the word and then come back down to the foot to relate it go deep in him that's a word for me too it's a word for all of us who say we're children of god none of us is perfect None of us is holier than thou. I encourage you to go deep. It's, it's so much going on in the supernatural realm right now. There's so much that God wants to say. There's so much that God wants to show us. But he can't do it. He's not doing it in a shallow place no more. Deep fellowship. Deep prayer. Deep groaning. Deep intercession deep travailing deep gathering of the saints come into the deep said the lord your god 